What's up guys? This is my XR80 shifter cart and in this video I'm going to be showing you guys what I did to build this thing. So I picked up this mini bike project for a price I just could not deny so I went for it and it's super unique. It has what I believe to be an 03 XR80 engine on it. Not in the best shape but definitely usable. As you can tell they took a pretty interesting route on mounting the engine to this mini bike. All sorts of bent rod and body mig welds but the thing is actually pretty sturdy believe it or not we're missing some goods on this side but the engine runs and that's all I could ask for fresh little startup for documentation purposes Let's see what she does I definitely bought that thing knowing it is a project and it's gonna need some things, but I think the 100 to 150 bucks I'm gonna put into it is gonna make it the perfect nomination for the cart that we are about to look at. So in home built spirit, I am taking this home built drift cart that I got from my buddy Jason a couple months ago and swapping it out because I just think it is the perfect fit for that engine. So there you go. Thing is insane and I cannot wait to put these two projects together and just birth this beautiful rat rod, ugly, all that in one drift cart. So just as a little overview of the cart, just to show some minor details of what they did. This is really nothing a Harbor Freight two bender can't get you. So I think it is the perfect example of a home built drift cart that really anybody could piece together with the right tools. The first step to all of this is cutting out the engine from that uh, mini bike so you know I can actually take a good look at it and see how we're gonna end up mounting it to the cart. Alright, already got this thing off the hog, and it's already looking better by itself, so that is a good sign. I'm going to go ahead and disassemble the Predator off of the go-kart, and it's honestly just hooked up with the four bolts that go to the engine, and then the throttle cable right now, so should be easy as pie. Looking at both these engines together, we obviously know which one is way more fire. Besides, this one is just a copy anyways. So yeah, what an upgrade. Let's get it on this thing and officially see a mock-up. All right. Oh, this thing's awesome. way heavier. All right. This is roughly. Oh my gosh, we are maxed out on her. I did not think that was gonna be an issue. Okay. Oh my god. We're gonna have to rock this thing to the far right, boys. All right. See what I'm talking about? Look at how well these things vibe together. That's perfect. So obviously there's still a ton to do as far as taking all the, you know, makeshift mounts off still, and then, you know, moving the seat around so the engine actually fits. But, you know, just that quick little mock-up gives you a lot of motivation to get stuff done, I'll tell you what. So, I'm just gonna get those mounts off and then I'll come back to you guys when we're ready to actually think of a mount. So I came to the conclusion, this is roughly where 
the engine is gonna be mounted. I do unfortunately have to move the seat up just a tad, but it's worth it because the mounting holes for originally the pegs on these engines fits perfect with the mount that is on the car already. If you didn't notice in the time lapse, I moved the seat and I found out that the engine is in the perfect spot. So my next step is to fab up a engine mount for the front that is gonna be attached directly to the frame. I actually already fabbed up a different pit bike engine prior to this. So I have this mount. It is a little bit too long, so I'm gonna to have to you know, make a 90 degree bend again, but it's much easier than making two of them. So to explain a little closer, this is where the mount would be obviously shortened to where it'd go right here. And then I'm thinking about using a tube and just notching it directly to the chassis right there. I think it'll give it a nice clean look. And then it will all line up with the, if this will focus, with the bolts that are going to the bottom of the engine right there. So it works out perfect and that should be just enough security for this engine. So it looks pretty rough, but this is the final product from the clip before. I didn't film any of it because I was winging it, but it has a little bit of gappage, which is what I like because I like to run good old spacers. So I'm gonna put this thing on. And there you go, mounts it up. Nothing crazy, sturdy. And from there, I will be able to mount this tubing. And this tubing is what is going to be then welded directly to the frame. However, there is an issue with this motor plate right here. Unfortunately, you can even tell in the video, it's completely off center, not level at all. GG's in the chat. Let me get a zoom in on this. Not even a sliver. So, I'm gonna cut it off and I'm gonna re-weld it on pretty much exactly where it is, just level. And that is when I'm gonna also be doing the motor mount. So all in one shebang. So I'm gonna get to cutting this off. All right, so I got the plate welded on. Now I need to get this engine back onto this plate and bolted down to this so I can actually mock up exactly where I'm gonna weld that piece of tubing. Holes are drilled out. Now I'm gonna get this engine on. Nice. That'll do. That will do. Oh, yes. These things are so crazy. I'm gonna get this thing bolted down through the foot peg bolt holes right there. And then that is gonna help me when I'm trying to weld it to the frame. All right, so I've adjusted the mount holes just a bit and I actually like it. Where the engine mounts here, it's good. I think the chain length is gonna be where I usually like it. However, I wanna try a closer setup as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and drill another two holes right here just in case I don't want to change anything up. All right, so I just have all four peg bolts in. And this thing is insanely sturdy, which makes me happy. So like I said earlier in the video, I was working on this, but then figured I needed to mount the engine first. So now I gotta figure that out. So to show you guys how I'm gonna mock this up, I pretty much just bolted the engine down, or left it bolted down, I should say and then just use this mount that I made earlier in the video and 
then sort of just mocking up this tubing by adding pressure to where it's lifting up a bit on the engine. And then that's where I made my mark with the Sharpie. So now I know where to weld it. And of course, when I notch it, it's gonna move the angle of it a lot, but I'm sort of gonna do that gradually until I get that perfect custom fit. So I'm gonna move on over to the little welding station and get this thing going. Most definitely could be prettier, but she's gonna hold, boys. Found the center of the tubing, and that is going to be the middle of where I am notching this thing. Bolted this thing on. Definitely could be tweaked a little bit to the right, which I'm gonna do, but that's close enough for me. All right, so tweaked it, and if you ask me, I think that's weldable, and it's gonna add the support she needs, so I'm gonna get this thing tacked and weld it up. I still definitely need to clean this stuff up, but it's welded. Gonna let it cool down for a bit. And then we're gonna get the engine back on and I'm gonna finish up welding everything for the shift linkage. Honestly, when I started this project, I did not expect to be using the new welder as much as I did, but I gl I'm glad I am because this is like the perfect project just to dive into this stuff without you know major risk. It's not like the purple beauty over there, you know what I mean? So after this cools down, that engine's back on. Not that the shake test is any certification, but this thing is not like going anywhere, boys. Like this thing is on there for good. So that's sick. I'm just gonna immediately get into the shift linkage, which I will explain what I purchased today to do that. So I've definitely already been tackling this off camera, but um, I'm fabbing up where I'm going to be mounting the handle which is actually kind of a funny story. This was the first bend I used on my Harbor Freight two bedder hiding behind all these projects. And it kinked, but it actually gave me the perfect, you know, perfect shape for the shifter that I wanted. The stuff I purchased tonight was some tubing and then this rod. And as you can see, I've already started on this as well. I have the shifter already trimmed and then I already drilled out the hole where the rod is going to go into. To quickly show you guys how I'm digging this thing up, I just have spacers in here to make sure that the plates are flat and I tighten them uh, on the floor so they're pretty level. And then we have these magnets holding them to the frame. I'm just going to tack them, remove all the hardware, finish welding them, should be good. All right, so the shop is a mess, but I have the shift linkage just about wrapped up. This is where I chopped the shifter, drilled a hole through it, and just made a 90 degree bend. I'm gonna be welding the tubing right here, on this seat mount, and then just right here. And I think that should just be good enough. If I see it bowing or anything, that's when I know that I'll probably have to add some more, but I'm just gonna run this for now. And then I like to drill um, a couple small holes on each end of this so I can put some cotter pins in there. 
But as you can tell, when you shift it, it works. Up and down. So DIY is actually working out, which uh, I'm very new to. So. Mm-hmm. <laughs>